The year is 718, as the Muslim Caliphate sinks its claws deep into what was Visigothic Spain, the last bastion of Christian Spain hides behind the Cantabrian Mountains. The Kingdom of Asturias now bore the responsibility of driving back the Muslim invaders and restoring Iberia to Christian rule. Before that, Iberia was ruled by the Christian Visigoths, former Germanic barbarians who took advantage of the fall of the Western Roman Empire, who ruled over and eventually assimilated to the Gallo-Roman populace. But Visigothic rule wasn't always stable, and by the year 711, the kingdom had just come out of another power struggle, with King Roderick barely retaining the loyalty of his vassals. Meanwhile to the south, a powerful new empire had emerged and eyed Iberia with hungry eyes. The Umayyad Caliphate, successor to the Rashidun Caliphate, had succeeded in conquering the Maghreb and bringing the Caliphate to its greatest extent yet. But it was about to become even greater, as a Muslim commander called Tariq ibn Ziyad then crossed the Strait of Gibraltar, which is named after him, and invaded Visigothic Spain, which was still recovering from a civil war and with its king dealing with rebellions in the north, the Arabs easily swept the south and gained reinforcements from the governor of Umayyad Maghreb and faced King Roderick at the Battle of Guadalete River, where his own men, already disloyal to the Visigothic king, betrayed him and were later annihilated by the Arabs, with the Umayyad Caliphate gaining total control over Iberia and raiding as far as France, where they would be defeated by Charles Martel at the not that important Battle of Tours. And so, the Visigothic remnants remained in Asturias, rallying under King Peleo with the Reconquista at the time being less of a reconquest of Iberia and more being trying their best to survive, defeating the Muslims at Covadonga in 722, securing his kingdom's survival for the time being. Over time, the kingdom of Asturias grew beyond the Cantabrian Mountains, conquering Galicia, Castile, and Leon, which would become an important centre for the Asturians, as well as the seat of its successor, the Kingdom of Leon, in 924. Meanwhile to the south, the Umayyad Caliphate would enter troubled times, as the Abbasid as Safar would overthrow the last Umayyad Caliph in 750, establishing the Abbasid Caliph, as Safar would then kill the entire Umayyad family, all except an Umayyad prince called Abd al-Rahman, who fled to al-Andalus after defeating its governor, establishing the Emirate of Cordoba in 756, which had to contend with the growing power of Asturias and the legend himself, Charlemagne, who successfully retook the foothills of the Pyrenees and much of Catalonia. Back in Asturias, the body of Santiago, or St. James, was found in Galicia, and the king of Asturias established a pilgrimage route there, as well as building a cathedral there. This served to assist in repopulating the regions of Galicia, Leon, and Castile, which previously had been described as a desert due to how unpopulated they were. 924, after a brief power struggle, after the abdication of Asturian king Alfonso III, Leonese king Ferrella II became the most powerful of the Reconquista kings. This is where the Reconquista really warms up, with many of the nobles and clergy of Leon effectively rewriting reality to suit the Reconquista, forging documents, fabricating genealogies, and framing the geopolitical situation as a grand struggle between the Christian Iberians against the Muslim Arabs. This was aided by the patron saint of Asturias and then Leon, St. James, who despite dying in 44 AD, apparently led an Asturian army to victory against a cruel Muslim prince at Clavillo, gaining the cognomen Matamoros, or Slayer of the Muslims, with the militant order of Santiago being established to fight the Muslims, which is honestly just some of the most high testosterone shit I've heard all day. Indeed, the whole of Spanish society was unified by the narrative of an old united Spain, defeated by evil foreign invaders due to their own sin and disobedience towards God, only to rise again and destroy the Muslim threat through crusade and reconquest. The Reconquista is basically what we see the Crusades as today in popular culture, except ten times more extreme and badass. In 939, King Ramiro of Leon defeated the now Caliph of Cordoba, Abd al-Rahman III, in the Battle of Simancas, ambushing and absolutely annihilating the Caliph's army, nearly killing him, which had the result of pushing the frontier a bit more forward, but it would stay there for the next 100 years. Back to the Muslim South, it was collapsing. Yep, 
Internal strife and instability brought the Caliphate of Cordoba to ruin, and by 1031, the whole thing exploded into warring states. But where the Muslim power in Spain collapsed, the Christians to the north took the opportunity to expand theirs in exchange. Meanwhile, as the Caliphate was collapsing, an unlikely new power arose to the north. King Sancho III of Pamplona would conquer lands from Leon to Aquitaine to Aragon, but his Basque hegemony was not to last, as when he died, his kingdom was divided. With one of these kingdoms, the Kingdom of Castile, was later become very important, as his first king was one named Ferdinand, who would be so great as to claim the title of Imperator Totios Hispania, or the Emperor of All Spain. This period of history was one of chaos and balkanization, where the foreign policy went from an us versus them narrative to one of ruthless pragmatism, with Christian kings vying for dominance to levy tribute on Muslim tithers, alliances between Christians and Muslims being commonplace, and many heroes of the time, such as the legendary El Cid, fighting against Christian kings and allying with Muslims. It was the kind of place where you could go to sleep and two factions would be wiped out overnight, and you'd find yourself under a different ruler a true medieval battle royale. Turning to King Ferdinand, he was the youngest of Sancho III's sons. As such, he became the target of attack by his older brothers in Leon and Aragon. Leon struck first, with King Bermudo attacking the Castilians and engaging them at Tamaron, but then he fell on his horse, and if you think Julius Caesar's death was brutal, Bermudo received 40 stab wounds by Lance when the Castilian army pounced on him. Ferdinand, after winning the battle, became the King of Leon as well as Castile. He later vassalized the Kingdom of Navarre, which controlled the heartland of the former Kingdom of Pamplona, and even butting heads with Aragon. Typhus like Toledo began paying tribute to Ferdinand, but those Typhus that didn't would face his wrath, as Ferdinand invaded such Typhus, plunging deep into Portugal and even going as far as Sevilla, Badajoz, and Valencia. Later in 1056, Ferdinand was proclaimed as Emperor, but later died in 1065, dividing his land between his three sons, putting the Christian kingdoms back to square one. But they were later unified by the King of Castile, Sancho II, who died under suspicious circumstances and was succeeded by his brother Alfonso VI, who had previously been humiliated and exiled under Sancho II. Alfonso VI then became the second Imperator Totius Hispania. In 1085, Toledo, which had previously been ruled by a Taifa, was retaken by the Christians after its emir was forced to flee, giving it to Alfonso in exchange for safe passage to another Taifa, greatly expanding the Kingdom of Castile and Leon. Shocked by this, the remaining Taifas invited the Moroccan Almoravids, who had proclaimed themselves as caliphs, as by now the Abbasid Caliphate had collapsed into hundreds of petty emirs and sultanates, who seized the Muslim Taifas by storm being met by Emperor Alfonso at the Battle of Sagrajas, where the Almoravids, hunted by their lives in the Sahara Desert from which they came, defeated Alfonso, and defeating Alfonso later two more times as they pressed east, even killing Alfonso's only son and heir. Alfonso then became desperate for help, calling on various European kings and knights for help, among them Raymond and Henry of Burgundy, with Raymond becoming the governor of Galicia and even marrying Alfonso's daughter Uraca, while Henry marries Teresa, an illegitimate daughter of Alfonso. Henry then became the governor of Portugal, which at this time was part of Castile and Leon. When Henry died, his son Alfonso had to fight his own mother to gain control of Portugal from her and her Galician lover, defeating her in battle and being proclaimed as Prince of Portugal, later defeating the Almoravids in battle and being proclaimed as the first King of Portugal. But Alfonso VII, the King of Castile and Leon, would have none of this, and attempted to put down this petty king, fighting the Portuguese at Valdevez. Well, it was more of a jousting tournament, but at the end of the day, the Portuguese won and became an independent kingdom. While this was happening, the Second Crusade was declared, and many Christians, particularly English Crusaders, were passing through and stopping by the Portuguese city of Porto, and Alfonso I managed to convince a number of them to help him by taking the Amoravid city of Lisbon, taking it in 1147, beginning a friendship that lasts to this day. Meanwhile to the south, the Almoravids were replaced by the Almohads, which were basically the Almoravids with a different name. Portugal would expand further south, setting its modern border pretty early on with the conquest of the Algarve down the line in 1247. 
Back to the east, Aragon, a rising power in the region, captured the city of Huesca in 1097. Later, Alfonso I of Aragon, who had a taste for battle, even fighting alongside the legendary El Cid, married the daughter of the Castilian king named Uraca. This marriage was far from happy, as he quarreled constantly, with Alfonso even entering open battle with his own wife, defeating her twice after securing his power over Aragon. He attacked and captured the city of Zaragoza with the sanctioning of the Pope and his own mini-crusade, crushing the Almoravids at Cotanda in 1120 and basically seizing the entire Ebro River Valley, later dying while sieging Fraga in 1134 with Ramiro II taking charge, marrying his daughter to the Count of Barcelona, merging the Kingdom of Aragon and the County of Barcelona into a single nation beginning what was known as the Crown of Aragon. Just a side note, the concept that will later become the Crusades was actually set in the Reconquista, with Pope Alexander II promising remission of sins for people willing to liberate the Spanish city of Barbastro. Meanwhile, this time, the Almohads entered the picture, causing a lot of trouble for the Christian kingdoms, except for Leon, which had split from Castile earlier, who actually allied with the Almohads to invade other Christians, with the Portuguese even appealing to a crusade, not against the Almohads, but against the King of Leon, Alfonso IX. Thankfully, the Almohads weren't very competent against fighting the Christian system of Tertullian castles until the enemy gave up. They also just didn't care enough to attack at the opportune moment. That was until 1211, when they geared up to invade the Christian North, invading in 1212 with the intention of conquering Castile. Castilian King Alfonso VIII called upon Pope Innocent III to call a new crusade, which he got and united the whole Christian north against the Almohads, gaining aid from Portugal, Aragon, Catalonia, Navarre, and even Leon showed up to unite under the banner of Christ. Later joined by the Knights Templar, Hospitalia, and Order of Santiago, among many other holy orders of Iberia. The Christian and Muslim armies met at Despenaperos on July 16th, beginning the Battle of Las Navas de Tolosa, where the Crusaders soundly defeated the Almohads, which crushed them so hard that the Almohad Empire would collapse soon after, though the Christians couldn't follow suit yet. Al Andalus would once again break up into small typhus, the largest of which being the Emirate of Granada, and past this point, it was just a desperate attempt to hold on to their lands, as the Emirs would constantly try and fail to push back the Christian armies, losing more and more land. Valencia fell in 1238, Sevilla fell the same year, and Cordoba, the old capital of Al-Andalus, the rival of Constantinople and Baghdad for the greatest cities in the world, was captured by the Kingdom of Castile in 1236. This was the crusading equivalent of the Eastern Crusaders capturing Egypt, which actually nearly happened around this time too. Over the remaining centuries, the Muslims were pushed back into the small Emirates of Granada, the last remaining Muslim state in Iberia barely surviving for the next two centuries after the disaster that was the 13th. By the latter of the 15th century, it was finally decided that the Catholic monarchs of Castile, Leon and Aragon, Queen Isabella of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon, should destroy the last remnant of Islam in Spain, ending the Emirates of Granada in 1492. The period that follows was one of religious persecution, deportation and destruction, with the Spanish Inquisition destroying the remnants of Muslim Iberia and fully Catholicizing the peninsula. Despite the de-Islamicization of Iberia, the legacy of Al-Andalus still remains, with the Alhambra and Granada, the former mosque and now cathedral of Cordoba, all being physical evidence that Al-Andalus existed. Arabic has left many influences on Spanish, with many geographic locations gaining their name from the Andalusian Arabs and many advances in science, engineering, and architecture originated here. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to make Ancient Greece Part 3.5 next week, so stay tuned for that. Until then, see you later.